Hello, Big Cow. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So I want to put out a special message today for Independence Day. And switching up from my regular content, I'm still getting back into the swing of things. But this is a rather comprehensive subject and topic because I want to talk about the similarities between MGTOW and Independence Day freedom. Because what I'm suggesting is that all, most all, of the strife and conflict that you're seeing, that you're that you see playing out in Western media, politics, social, cultural, gender, work, education, medical, diet, human health issues. These things which you see playing out are actually an expression of MGTOW, men going their own way. For me, Howard Dare, MGTOW, and the expression of freedom itself, they've never been different. Okay, they are the same thing. America is a MGTOW country. When things became unfair, uh, non-conducive to human life. Freedom. You know, the expression of individual freedom. Uh, self-determination. This being the motivating engine of progress and advancement, right? Motivated self-interest, right? Why did the chicken cross the road? Because it wanted to. Because it chose to. It's not a joke. Uh, so what you're seeing playing out, this conflict, this strife, this struggle, is these opposing forces. One, geared towards freedom, motivated self-interest, a free market, and a toss and tumble kind of world. Yes, you know, it's, it's a hard world, and it's not always going bare, but it is free, and it allows for the expression of life. Or, another view, another set of beliefs, which are to take care of things, to make things fair, and to make things equal. I wonder if you could see that it's actually the same thing, that it's just the two extremes of the same thing, you know? Uh, let this be an insight for the MGTOW out there. This is part of the source of your frustration, right? You think these are two separate things. They're not. They are the same thing, but they're just different sides of it. Therefore, it can't be resolved by cutting off the other part of it, right? It's like somebody flipping a coin and, you know, getting heads or tails half of the time and saying, you know, let's just move that other side of coin. It's like, no, it's it's all part of the same thing. So this conflict is playing out. And, you know, for the leftists, and I am neither a leftist nor a rightist, <laughs> uh, I, I'm simply an ethical person. I'm simply a person who wants to sustain themselves and those around me uh, into the future in in a healthy, beneficial, profitable way, right? Uh, I, I am, you know, like just a, a benevolent kind of overseer to my own life. Uh, and I hope it works that way for others as well. You know, I hope that things turn out. Uh, isn't that horrible? I mean, isn't that just toxic masculinity right there? Instead of, you know, like a guarantee that everything is going to be equal and fair, right? What is, what is fair? If somebody doesn't take care of themselves, if they don't take care of their health, if they don't study, if they don't discipline and work hard and try to make the best of any given moment, any situation that they're in, what, what is fair? What is it that they should fairly achieve having put in those inputs? And of course, the answer is failure, right? And hopefully, with this toss and tumble, knowledge, and wisdom, and now the evolution of the market, now the evolution of the processes that lead to success. You can't have one without the other. In other words, you can't become really successful at running any system unless you've dealt with the failures and the difficulties, unless you understood the principles at play there. It's not given. Science is not given to us. We earn it by understanding, right? So I think that you know, to understand the idea that we have built our society, our civilization on these principles, and they work. And of course, they enable a group of people to sustain themselves without the functioning working knowledge of the principles of the system. These are the benefits of the system. And naturally, they extend to the young, to the old, to a degree, to the needy, right? to, the, to the worthy needy to the redemptive sinner, but not to the perpetual sinner, right? I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't bring that in, but it's there. This is a part of what's going on. And back to my other point, what you're seeing is not the failure of the left ideology, but the culmination. This is the, the, the flower. This is the expression of it. That's right. A dawdling, lost, old man. Everybody gets old. Okay, Joe Biden I'm talking about whose ideas and whose ability to manipulate the ideas, they're gone. They don't, the ideas don't apply. They're self-serving garbage for an older generation. He himself can't reason anymore. So he's just wanting to get along. You know, he just wants to get the help that he needs. So he's going to go along. So it's not an independent, free-thinking person in command of the situation. That's not what it is. And that doesn't work for, you know, make progress in society.
Most strong people who struggle and suffer and deal with setbacks, they know that. But they've propped up a system of entitled, of uh, the exchange of favors, of uh, creating an audience, of uh, fulfilling a need for a price. This is the system of victimhood to play victim and to therefore have entitled. It's a fair exchange, right? Of course, it's a poison exchange. And of course, the more desperate, the more, you know, the further down on any given social ladder that somebody is, uh, the more upset they are with whatever it is the haves and the have nots, the do's and the do's, the glass half empty, the glass half full, looking to the future and saying, okay, you know, nothing is perfect, but we're moving towards, you know, getting better in good faith. Or, you know, that, that's the glass is half full. Or, oh my God, you know, this is so bad. This is so unjust. This is so unfair. This is, this is systemic patriarchy and will to power. And therefore the whole thing needs to just come down. And I don't care what it's replaced with. And I don't care if there's anything to replace it. That's, you know, how strongly a person feels. And you can see this demonstrated, you know, just on these thousands of videos that we get to see, you know, uh, shopkeepers trying to throw people out of their store because they're wearing a MAGA hat or they're wearing the color red. Um, this is the culmination of that worldview of entitlement and victim status and this idea that everything should be fair and equal. Now consider, that's not a bad idea. That's not like, oh my God, you know, oh, what a horrible thought. No, that's a decent, noble, virtuous idea. Yeah, everything should be fair and equal. Nobody should be hung. Nobody should suffer. It's a childlike, naive view of the world, but of course it's decent. But of course it's unrealistic given the ideas of personal responsibility, you know, given the simple idea of cause and effect, given the simple fundamental ideas of a law of identity. A equals A. A rock is a rock. A man is a man. And he can't be a woman. Not if he's a man. The thing is what it is. And unless you can start from that premise, the law of identity, just A equals A. This isn't, you know, about human sexuality. Unless you can start there, you can't go anywhere else. So the victim, the entitlement, the person who can't get anything done, who can't make progress in the system, is bitter and is angry and wants to blame somebody, anybody but themselves. And they need the resources, the material resources to survive. So you see how strongly the identity, it's tied to their biological existence, but it's a failed system, right? It doesn't work. Playing the victim and blaming other people... <laughs> Right, <laughs> and then and then making some appeal to whether it be you know the, you know the popular vote or to the marketplace. Uh, it's not an exchange of value; it's an inducement of guilt, right? <laughs> Which is not a bad sales technique. Uh, you see that it works, right? Because it appeals to some basic negative aspects, right, of our of our nature, which. You know, I have them as well. And we're not, we're not going to go into those right now, but I'm sorry. Because right? I will go into them right now, and most people do. Let me tell you about my day. So what you're witnessing, what you're seeing play out is the culmination of a mindset that MGTOW has been diametrically opposed to at its core, at its basic nature. Walking away from a bad deal, okay? Choose to not be a slave in a society, in a culture that has demons men of achievement, of merit, who wish to freely engage in a free market, who want to play the game opposed by a group of people that are not healthy, that are not well, physically or psychologically, who want to play the victim and who want to be taken care of. And to play the victim, they have to have somebody to blame. And they're going to blame whoever is appearingly dominant, successful, doing the right thing. So are you getting a little bit more insight as to why the system is being torn down? It's not It's not like some advanced plan. It's not like some super mastermind is out there. Although there may well be plenty of super masterminds out there. No, this is just basic human nature playing out. And now you have, you know, this 80 plus year old man in the position of the president of the United States with his finger on the button. I know that a lot of younger people hear this and they're thinking, you know, oh my gosh, power, you know, this power of force. But it's much more the, the power of threat, okay? Not force. You don't want to actually carry out anything like that. But you certainly need to have the credibility that you may well carry out. Biden cannot provide that in any way, shape, or form. You know, like if we need a champion to go out there and 
get the message across so that people don't mess with us, that's the wrong person to do it. And I suspect that some people listening to this are thinking to themselves, well, that's not fair. You know, you should judge people, you know, equally on their merit, not on their age or their ability. And again, going back to the point, this might well be a, a somewhat decent, noble virtue, but it's very unrealistic. Look, I remember as a child uh, getting a substitute teacher and yeah, you know, it, I physically judged that person. If that person came into the room and was looking good and presented themselves confidently and spoke firmly and directed and appeared kind and considerate. Wow, that was a good new teacher. And if they lacked any of those qualities, you know what I mean? It was like, well, I'm not going to respect this teacher. This is some some walk on. I'm not. Gonna. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was I was a tough kid. You know, I was a hard kid. Uh, we could go into that, but we're not, we're not. Well, maybe we will, okay? Because understand that we're all telling ourselves this story of our lives. And, you know, <clears throat> how does the story that you're telling yourself about your life, about the events of life, and the emotions that this creates, how does it portray? Does it portray you as a victim? Because a lot of my stories portray me as a victim. And then the, the emotional response to that is anger and resentment and frustration. But what if I told a story instead of achievement, gaining of knowledge and wisdom through a rough and tumble world with people that are not always able to teach me by their merit and by their ability, but rather by their lack of these things. Now, now what, what is emotion generated from my story to myself? Well, what a champion, right? I've dealt with some of the worst people that, you know, you could come across. And you know what? Actually, I'm better off for it. I'm stronger, smarter. Yeah, I took, took a few shots along the way, but I don't have a glass jaw, so what the hell? And you can't have a glass jaw. But if your life is, you know, you... so. So this philosophy, this way of looking at the world, this kind of self-defense mechanism, you're seeing the fruition of it expressed in our political system. Exactly. A weak, lost, adult, old man, weak, scared, timid people who want free stuff, whose feelings are getting hurt all the time over the most meaningless things, who are going off into the tall grass of life itself and just throwing, you know, just throwing their lives away based on a whim and a feeling and emotion based on a story that they're being told that while it may have some nobility and virtue in it is in fact unrealistic and untrue and cannot be applied in life, not without any good effect. You know, with this negative effect of what you're seeing. So what, is Joe Biden going to be the NFL quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs? Can, can we do that? How about, how about, um, how about he just steps in to the Jay Paul, Mike Tyson fight and fulfills Jay Paul's role, huh? Can he do that? We're all equal, right? Oh, that's not fair. Oh, I'm being, a, I'm demonstrating toxic masculinity. Fire burns, gravity be keeping you down. That is not toxic masculinity. Patrick Mahomes is currently the best quarterback in the NFL. That's not. There's nothing that that's that's correct. And to think that you want to live in a world where that's not true. That's not a comfort. That's not that's not going to help you. That cannot be. That is an inversion of just the most basic fundamental principles of reality. Things like the law of identity. A is A. So MGTOW, the men, listen, are you gaining some insight as to why this is so frustrating for us and why it's so frustrating for the young man? All masculinity has been branded as toxic masculinity. The starting quarterback will be replaced with someone who has no ability to demonstrate quality. And fairness. Oh, you say that's silly? Look at the election for the president of the United States. So it's not silly, is it? You're a girl boss and you find this offensive? What is this phrase, girl boss? Boss is boss. Doesn't have to be qualified. Neither socially, racially, doesn't have to be qualified. As a matter of fact, it stands, that, that's the whole thing. It stands independent of those things. That's the idea. These are basic ideas. Without that, the formation of a map of reality that allows us to function within reality is not possible. Might this explain the behavior of the crazy left? If the fundamental assumptions about what's going on here are incorrect, 
perhaps decent, perhaps virtuous, perhaps noble, certainly um, disinclined to any sort of suffering or difficulty. <clears throat> Everything fair and equal. But is this the nature of reality? Is everything bare and equal? And the answer is no, it is not. Should it be? Well, that's an interesting question. Perhaps, in certain ways, yes, no doubt. That would, that would be good. <laughs> I'm sorry. In any case, you're not seeing any sort of a break, okay? You're not seeing any sort of a meltdown. You're seeing the fruition, the expression of this philosophy, of this worldview. The thing to notice is the meltdown of the individuals within the process. And to recognize that it's the existential threat to their worldview that they're fighting against. But they have to come to reality. They have to admit that, no, this is not our quarterback. This cannot be our quarterback. And even if the idea that, oh, oh but, you know, he can be our quarterback because... We're all equal and we want to be fair and we want to be just. And if I were in that position, I wouldn't want to be treated harshly. Again, is that a realistic view? I understand, right? Like, bah, yeah, if you're stepping off curb, you certainly want it to be safe. I, I get it. Me too. But is it all the time? No, it's not. Are there things that you can do to uh, move the odds in your favor and to ensure? Yes, there are. Is it 100%? No, it's not. Should the fact that it's not 100% deter you from doing the things that get it to 80 or 90%? No, it should. So, simply put, if you can operate in this one instance, in this one moment, with the proper motivation, you should be able to extend that into all months. And you should then be able to reap all those benefits and all of that accrued interest in power, right? So, so take care of your health, right? <laughs> Make sure you get plenty of protein, plenty of rest, and don't let the stress get too high. Uh, but then again, don't try to live, you know, that is not the purpose and the meaning of life. And if it is, you would get soft and sick and entitled and then start to feel like a bit dumb and then start to feel inadequate to the task of reality. And then you would potentially become locked in on this ideology, on this world, you, even in the face of, you know, your elderly grandfather who has dementia stepping up and saying, I'm in charge, and you, know, you being like, oh, thank God grandpa's here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right? But, but you, right? That's the play out, isn't it? Isn't, it? isn't that what happened? Isn't that what has happened and is happening? Fascinating, you know, to see these uh, full-grown men and women, I suppose, uh, if they ever become full-grown, uh, on, on media, you know, just freaking out, defending by right? uh, in the face of the reality of his inability to see that and to know that in some place within that person, you know, they must be saying to themselves, this argument that I'm making is absurd. And it is. And yet, they are so strongly attached to it. Why? As I have explained, the story of their life, narrative of their life, the victim status of their story to excuse and to soften the hurt of the failure generating feelings of emotion, of resentment, of blame. To play the victim, you have to have to blame somebody. And who do you blame? You blame those who have what you have not, or who are withholding what it is you think want or need and are entitled to because they did you wrong. You see the trap, right? You see how easy it is for anybody to fall into. Now you've got a political party, you know, you, you've got an entire way of life feeding into it because people want to believe it. It softens the blow, softens the responsibility. They might even get the resources out of it. Now they're locked in on this maladaptive worldview, but it allows them to get through psychologically, emotionally. The institutions, they play to this. They themselves, half of, you know, a good percentage of them as human beings feel the same way. So it becomes expressed in the school system, in the justice system, media, the entertainment, politics. See, all of these things are downstream of the idea. And if you can get the basic idea in there, you'll, you'll get all those other things. This is why things like the law of identity are so important, so fundamental. The human brain doesn't develop without the ability to safeguard this very thing. So the idea, you know, uh, insert into early education, 
the, the idea of the fluidity of, of gender, of biological sex. I hope you can see what this really, I mean, it, that's bad in and of itself, right? That's horrible. But I hope you can see that this is an attack on the fundamental core principle that A is A. And I didn't come up with this. This is Aristotle and reinforced to me by Ayn Rand. But also experienced by me growing up and looking at the world and seeing a tree, a car, an airplane, a rock, a human being, an animal. And knowing that these things have to be fit into the complete system of human mind. And that if anybody disrupts that or messes with that, that the whole system is off and I can't be allowed. This is the main reason why I personally never liked uh, hallucinogenics. <laughs> I don't like my basic observation of reality being messed with. So, you know, half of our population has messed with their perception from an emotional point of view for entitlement and victimhood. Therefore, the men are to blame. They're actual saviors. We, the men, are witnessing this and have been witnessing this for many, many years, but it is largely incomprehensible. Like, we, we feel that well, this is wrong. You know, you're putting somebody who doesn't know how to do the job into the job, and you're pretending like they should be allowed to do the job because it's their turn or because some sort of social consideration, you know? And this is really what's happening. It's like it's, it's, this, in, it's, it's this untrained person's turn to fly the plane because we're trying to be fair to everybody. I can't tell you how many... Uh, group therapy sessions I've, I've been in over the last years, right? Because I need help. Uh, and how utterly misguided and incompetent the people speaking, you know, these particular things are sometimes. Uh, it's fascinating, right? And it, I could do a whole video on it because it's this idea that uh, personal passion and revelation is therapy and ins and wisdom, right? Uh you know, so, so it's like a person, you know, standing up and saying, you know, I used to bang my head against the wall every day, a hundred times. And then I stopped. And then I learned, you, you don't need to bang your head against the wall either. And it's like, ooh, yeah, people need to now applaud, you know, in the audience. Uh, it's personal revelation. They're telling stories about their lives. They're telling the stories that justify their behavior and elicit the emotions, okay? And it's comprehensive, right? It, it has to fit together in this way. Now we we're here now, you know, and there's somebody like Joe Biden standing up there losing his sentences. And you can't, you can't square the circle. The citizens are not safe in their own countries because the government does not have their interest in mind at all. It's giving them the false narrative. We're all boss. We're all equal. Perhaps, again, a noble, virtuous idea, an ideal. But again, if the person hasn't done the things in life to gather the value, the wisdom, and the knowledge, and another person, you know, like one has and one hasn't, should they be equal? And the answer is no, they're, they're not equal. They haven't done the same thing. So this idea of saying, oh, but they are equal, uh, is a great injustice, is a great, you know, fee for the person who hasn't done the work, but who still wants the reward. This is fundamentally what's really going on, right? This is Ayn Rand. Uh, the pursuit of unearned rewards. Hey, you, you know, anything you want in life. Go get it, earn it, build it, do it. It's yours. Can be yours. But many of the people, they want it. Give to them. They're entitled. Because they're a good person. That's the story. And when the reality doesn't match up with the story, the feeling is resentment, bitterness, and victimhood. Blame. And now you have a sickle face. Now you have a puppet. An emotional puppet. No wisdom, no knowledge, you know, governs their decisions. Perhaps balancing their checkbooks and making change, yes, they still have access. Of course they do. Notice how the emotion, this existential threat to their worldview of victimhood and, you know, who they blame for victimizing them. Notice how out of control they get when it's threat, when, you know, they feel it, like, might not be true. And, of course, it's not true. <laughs> Even if it were true, it's very unhealthy to look at things that way. You, you control your destiny. Even if 90% of it has been taken out of your control, the 10%, and this is mostly concerning the story that you're telling yourself and the feelings that it generates, that's yours. Nobody can take that from you, ever. I know. 
although it can be so compromised that you know it's largely lost but that's that's a completely other video so uh, i guess i'll leave it at that for now i just wanted to give you some insight that these are basic fundamental human emotions uh at play here these are the large powerful forces of self-determination responsibility strength and growth versus victimhood blaming entitlement cutting corners the desire for unearned resources see see how that's like the root of what's going on there what you're seeing playing out is not an aberration. It's not a, it's not a problem. It's not a mess up. It's the natural expression. If somebody old eats and doesn't exercise, they gain weight. It's not, it's not fairness or unfairness or victimhood or anything like that. That's basic, you know, law of reality. A equals A. But if somebody has fallen afoul of these things, or has taken the easy way and run afoul of these things, now they're arguing against the basic nature of reality. And that's what you're seeing. And I don't know how to, well, it's painful. It's, you know, they need to mature. I understand the idea that uh, the leftist sees the right, the conservative side, as uninformed, inexperienced, like a presumption of, of evil. And it might, you know, there might be some truth in that, but it could also be a maturity, an advancement of, yes, these are your leftist noble, virtuous ideas, but they don't apply reality to a free market, to human life, to the struggle of life. In some ways they should, and we will bring them into our existence, into, you know, we will materialize them, we will express them, we will take care of the old, we will take care of the young, we'll do that. But this is not the way of sure. We will rise people, we will raise people up so they can potentially reach their best, you know, their greatest potential. But no, this is not the way of nature. And it is not our priority and due to make things equal. It is our duty and responsibility to provide the equality of the opportunity. That, that you know, that's, that's the best we can do there. And then the individual, through the expression of individual freedom, they're the ones who are responsible for that. Not the government. Not, you know, the patriarchy. Not the thousands of years of oppression. Understand, these are basic human ideas and emotions at play. And as the times are changing, the expression of the ideas are changing, but the fundamental core of the ideas remain the same. So I suppose the question becomes, can you be a strong and happy, uh, powerful man who lives a good life in this day and age? And the answer is yes, of course. You can ignore 90% of this bullshit. <laughs> doesn't matter to you. And, you know, but you are dealing with like a petulant child. Perhaps, and to a degree, you know, we ourselves are the petulant child to ourselves. But you can take care of that. You know, this is the stoic principle that we suffer more in our minds and in our imaginations than any place else. You know, so don't do that to yourself. It's not necessary. You can have a good day. You know, you can get your things done. You can have a positive attitude. And work that you put in now and today can benefit your future. You know, it's not just you doing something. It's you doing something that has a positive effect moving forward. So the interest accrues. You know, you're being very wise, setting up your, you know, your relationships with other people, you know, because you want them to be happy and healthy too, so that, you know, they can buy your products and buy your cars, buy your computer programs and watch your videos, right? You know, it's a positive thing is what I'm saying, uh, but it is a thing, right? But <laughs> yes, you're competing for the job and you need to be best at the job to get the job. Uh, and if you're not, then... You know, just change the way you're doing it, looking at it, you know, and approaching it and uh, make it work. That's a tough one, right? It's not going to be all together for you. Quite the opposite. But I, but I believe that you're up to the challenge. And I believe that your commitment to the ideas and uh, feelings that MGTOW engenders are quite noble, quite virtuous, and will serve you quite well. So these are the principles, you know, that created the United States of America. This is the Declaration of Independence. That's what it is. If you, you know, no taxation without representation, you're not going to treat me fairly. I'm not going to be part of this system. I am free to walk away. Of course, the problem is, is that, you know, we men in our culture, we're fish in a fishbowl. So, you know, you're mm, free to walk away 10, 20 percent, not 100 percent, because you're in the fishbowl with, with everybody else. And half of the people, half of the fish in the fishbowl are going crazy because their world is that, you know, you're the victimizer, they're the victims. They've been getting free resources. They want more free resources. We're all equal. It doesn't matter who's who, what's what. 
in what we do. The law of identity does not apply. Reality is not reality. It's whatever we decide we want it to be so people can eat as much as they want and they'll still be healthy, but they won't. So this is, this is the conflict that you're witnessing and it's fundamental. It's basic. How will your life be determined? Will it be determined by popular opinion, by culture, by the people around you, by the yellow pages, by the newspaper, by the videos? Or will you determine? Will you pick your course? Will you decide what's important for you in life and then pursue it independent of a bunch of bullshit stories? And do you recognize the value, the virtue, the strength, the nobility in that? And I believe you do. And do you understand now why seeing what you see is so upsetting? We may not have the words for what we feel. That's all I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to share with you. That I, that I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I understand. And I, I believe if you, know, you get a little bit more insight to it, you'll understand. And you won't have to suffer the emotion of it. What, what was it on the video that I heard? Uh, yeah, Dave Dispenza, right? Whatever. Uh, if you can tell yourself a story without the emotion, that's wisdom. Okay, so get wise before you get old. Do not punish yourself, you know, with, with the stories that you tell yourself and the emotions that they elicit. Keep yourself on course, remain positive, do what's good for you. That would include not hurting other people, but, you know, uh, it's, it's a rough and tumble world. You don't have a glass jaw. You'll be okay. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think about this. It's a broad subject. Uh, and please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate. If you're in a position to help out the Howard Dare channel, please do so. There is no monetary support. Uh, I'm not here to sell you to the advertisers or anything like that. Uh, so find my Cash App donation link and help out the Howard Dare channel. You know, a few bucks here or there. Uh, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, Big Town.